waiting, huh? If you're watching this video, you've probably heard the news that came out of Social Game Info yesterday that Konami is planning on restructuring their digital entertainment business. More specifically, on November 1st, they're taking the arcade game division out of Konami Digital Entertainment and merging it into KPE Takasago, the Konami subsidiary responsible for pachinko and patchy slot titles. KPE Takasago will be renamed to Konami Amusement to indicate the wider scope of the subsidiary. Naturally, whenever Konami comes up in the media these days, people expect everything to be on fire, but since we have a history of explaining the business surrounding the music games we love so much, I figured we'd pop out of obscurity very briefly to give you some insight as to what may be happening. Purely from a logistical point of view, there's a lot to like about this new arrangement. It's unfortunate that the recent collapse of the Japanese arcade market has cut out many independent arcades from the picture, but the consequence of this is that many of the arcades that remain are members of larger chains, which are commonly also customers of KPE's patchy slot business and occasionally customers of KPE's pachinko business. This new arrangement would allow them to simplify the relationship Konami has with those businesses by having a single business relationship with Konami Amusement, as opposed to two relationships with Konami Digital Entertainment and KPE as separate entities. Social Game Info's article even states this is an explicit goal for the restructuring. Integrating the amusement business into one subsidiary allows the sales teams to focus entirely on a B2B or business-to-business -business line of business, whereas digital entertainment can be solely devoted to B2C, which is business-to-consumer. Even beyond the explicitly stated goals of the restructuring, it just makes sense looking at what the two businesses have in common. Both companies develop two things, hardware cabinets which they sell to arcades, and the software that runs on top of them. Putting those minds together in the same subsidiary is likelier to result in cross-pollination of talent and ideas, and the games could be better in the end result. I'd certainly be more interested in playing Konami Patchy Slot Machines if saving progress to my account was as easy as tapping an e-amusement pass instead of having to take a photo of a QR code with my phone every time I'm about to get off the machine. But before we end, we need to talk about the Asian gaming division, which is causing a lot of confusion. Social Game Info's post mentions that the restructuring will also result in the creation of gaming equipment targeting the Asian market. The exact words they used in Japanese are Asia Shijou ni Mikata Gaming Kiki. While the word gaming is used, gaming kiki is used to refer to equipment targeting casinos. While gambling is illegal in Japan, many Japanese video game companies make a ton of money selling slot machines and poker tables to Asian casinos. A similar misunderstanding took place in spring of 2015 when Sega announced similar plans to expand in the, quote, gaming market, and I was lucky enough to be drinking with someone from Sega while it was happening who cleared things up for me. Konami has been investing heavily in expanding their casino business in recent years, and they've even donated three and a half million dollars to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, to develop their Hospitality Management Bachelor of Science program focused on the, quote, gaming industry. So, sorry to let you down, but the Asian gaming division isn't so exciting after all. While it's become somewhat of a meme over the last year to lynch Konami for whatever thing they did that you don't like, I think a lot of the uncertainty in complaining about this business decision is misplaced. I don't expect anything significant to change with the money titles because of this in the near future, and long-term impacts on the business are likely to result from the health of the arcade business in Japan more than anything else. The only possible casualties I see from this arrangement in the short term are UB Plus and Reflect Beat Plus. Are those games going to continue to be developed from within Konami Digital Entertainment, and if so, are more obstacles going to pop up in the way of timely song pack releases? That really isn't clear right now. While we have relatively little information to work off of, we hope this clears up any questions or uncertainties you may have had. Thanks for listening.